Hello my brothers and sisters in Christ worldwide. Uh, this is a message about a highly sensitive issue which people in the body of Christ have been arguing about it uh, for centuries and so I wanted to address that and touch on that mm -hmm. briefly because I've already written an article about it and published it on my website and um, to which I make a link in the body of the description of this video uh, where you can go and uh, read more on that but however I wanted to touch on this briefly here so because it's a highly sensitive issue I would like you to please put aside all your prejudices and uh, step away from your stance on this issue for at least um, as long as this video lasts and hear me out uh, till I finish and please don't make any judgments or make any decisions until I finish and go move away from that and take that with you and think about it study it and then by all means make any decisions or judgments you wish now we were reading comments under our videos me and my wife um, and we noticed uh, some people are mentioning a person's YouTube channel and it wasn't just one or two times it was quite a few times and so we were curious as we didn't know that person's YouTube channel and so we went there and checked the uh, channel and as I was looking at all these videos I just decided to randomly pick one of the videos and see what uh, this person is talking about uh, this uh, video channel which is actually from Mr. Amir uh, Sarfati's uh, YouTube channel is titled can you hate others and be spirit filled now uh, I am not in the habit of going around watching other people's channels and commenting on them or you know making a response video about them this is the first response video I've ever made and um, probably gonna be the last one uh, because I don't I'm not in the habit of that and, and I am one for unity in Christ I don't know this person and don't get me wrong I have nothing against him or his messages whatsoever I don't know him and I can't uh, make any judgments on that but what I do know is I've just like I said I've watched this one video which is a short video about um, two minutes it's just a piece of a uh, bigger message from his sermons and like I said it's titled can you hate others and be filled with spirit or be spirit filled um, first of all uh, the title to be to be honest is an enigma like he said in himself at the end of his video it's an enigma but he has put that title there he's posed an enigma and he is trying to address that so to me uh, to be honest it is wrong to do that because uh, you can't say can you hate others and be spirit filled it's just the same as saying can you hate uh, while you love uh, you, you just can't do that it's just a paradox you can't uh, the question is wrong to begin with and uh, however he starts his message by saying so I don't teach partial rapture theory where only some Christian will be raptured because others who are anti-semites will not be raptured I don't do that this is not me every born-again spirit-filled Christian will be raptured period uh, well done and that is, that is actually absolutely true and I couldn't agree with you more but the thing is he carries on and this is what he says my only question is if you're an anti-semite check if you even know Jesus check if you even have the Holy Spirit in you because I cannot see how someone will be filled with the Spirit of God in him and 
and hate the people of God's image. This is to me a nigger. Right. Uh, now, what he is saying is a little bit um, confusing and it could be really misleading for people who don't uh, read into you know, the message, you can't read between the lines and, you know, um, maybe uh, he's probably explained it and clarified it later. Even in this short uh, cut piece of video that is being cut out of his message, he even says uh, later, This is to me, Nick. I don't preach that. But we know that Satan hates the Jews, so if you find yourself also hating the Jews, or any other group of people for that matter, who are you really aligning yourself with? So yes, he says first, if you hate Jews, then uh, Satan hates Jews. So you're basically you're aligning yourself with Satan. Uh, when uh, he also continues and says, if you hate any other group, of people, any other group of people for that matter, uh, which is good, which is right, that's what he should have said. But when you're focusing on one set of people, then um, the question is altogether wrong because, uh, first of all, when you say anti Semite uh, and you say if you hate Jews, you are aligning yourself with Satan, then uh, no, sorry, uh, Jesus himself went against teachers of the law. They were Jews, Pharisees, Sadducees, and he even called them whitewashed tombs, Matthew 23, 27. He called them brood of vipers, Matthew 12, 34. He called them uh, children of Satan, John 8, 44. And John the Baptist also called them by names, similar names. And so, no, uh, you can't generalize these things and you can't say a group of people are so special if you're against them then uh, you are aligning yourself with Satan or you are not spirit-filled. Jesus also tells these uh, Jews, the Pharisees and Sadducees, out of these stones God can raise up children of out of these stones, God can raise up children of Abraham because they were boasting that they were children of Abraham. They were special people and that they are favored by God. Uh, but in Matthew, like I said, but in Matthew uh, 3 verse 9, Jesus says, out of these stones, God can raise up children of Abraham. So uh, what he's saying is that it has absolutely nothing to do with your bloodline. It has absolutely nothing to do with your genealogy your ancestors, your father, your forefather, is just to do with you and your heart, the condition of your heart. It's nothing to do with anything else. Salvation is a personal matter, it's something to do with your own personal belief. It is nothing that you can inherit, it is nothing that you can be um, given just because you're a special person. It is something that you have to receive. It's already there. God has already given His uh, Son as a sacrifice. And you as a person have to receive it. No matter what background you're from, uh, what race you're from, what nationality you are, and what religion you come from, what religious background you may come from. So it has nothing to do with that. Now, uh, for people to understand this message, I understand what you're saying, Amir. I, 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 don't get me wrong, please. My problem is that this message should have been more complete. I, I know this is only a, a short piece of a longer video sermon of yours, um, but even in that, that short message, you can't generalize this by calling uh, any anybody anti-semite because anti-semite means somebody who is against all Jews no matter what now you can have a name for somebody who is against all uh, Italians and say anti-Italians uh, there is no there is no such a thing uh, and if there is then that person has a psychological problem let alone 
his or her faith being questionable. You know, so you will not even gain to question or examine their faith. We have to examine their state of mind. I think they're not stable. If somebody has a right frame of mind and stable in mind and soul, uh, then uh, they would never be against a set group of people, no matter what. When you're saying anti-Semite, you, you're talking about somebody who hates all Jews. And to me, uh, somebody who hates a group of people because of their um, belief, their religion, their uh, nationality, their race, their whatever, and then uh, that person's character, that person's personality is on the question to begin with. I won't even go further to even question their faith, I question their character, their personality. They haven't got a stable uh, condition of mind and they're, they're, uh, they haven't got a right frame of mind to begin with. They, they really uh, need a psychiatrist to deal with them. They have a psychological issue. But as far as being against Jews, uh, you can't again generalize that um, because Jesus went totally against Pharisees and Sadducees. Uh, he called them whitewashed tombs in Matthew 23, 27. He called them brood of vipers. Uh, Matthew 12 34 that's pretty strong language and he, he called them children of Satan in John 8 verse 44 remember that one you see it, 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 people don't preach on these things behind the pulpit to educate people to broaden their their uh, perspectives because it's been so much politicized uh, people feel restricted and they feel like they can't even say anything. I say what the Bible says. I say what the Lord commands me to say. And I'm not afraid of anything. My YouTube channels, both of them, mine and my wife's, uh, both, both of our channels have been restricted. And, you know, we're doing what we think is right. We, we, we're not saying things to please people and to increase our subscribers. Uh, of course, we would like that, but we're not doing it for that reason. That's not our aim. We're doing it to raise awareness, educate people, and, you know, open people's eyes to the Word of God. Uh, so please, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to condemn this person. Salvation um, and having the Spirit of God or being filled with the Spirit, as you say, uh, is a personal matter. Uh, it has nothing to do with your bloodline. It has nothing to do with your background, uh, faith, your religious background, your nationality, your race, your creed, your anything. It has nothing to do with that. Uh, one has to grow up, mature, and uh, decide for themselves whether they want to receive salvation by faith or not um, that is a personal choice so it's nothing to do and God and we know God has no favoritism because God says that in, the, in his word I have no favoritism and we've seen it in the history in the Bible uh, that God doesn't prefer one brother over another for, for no reason it doesn't work that way and so my message to you, uh, Mr. Amir Sarfati, uh, is that your message needs to be complete. Although, like I said, your message, I have nothing against you personally. Uh, I'm a very level-headed person. I take things as they are. I don't just go, uh, you know, condemn somebody because of one message or, you know, what they've said one time. Uh, what I suggest is that this message should have been more complete, although I understand this is only part of a bigger message, but even here, uh, shouldn't have said um, things like, if you're anti-Semite, uh, because if you're anti-Semite, I think uh, it's the same as being anti 
uh, Spanish, anti-Italians, anti-anything. But understand and make people understand that Judaism, being a Jew, is not a nationality. It is not a race. Judaism is a religion. It's just the same as any other religion, any other faith. Judaism is a faith or a religion they practice, certain people practice because they believe it. Now, uh, particularly in Israel, when you're born in Israel, they consider you, the, presumption, the general cons consensus or the presumption is that you are a Jew. Uh, it's, it's totally wrong because uh, the same thing happens in, uh, in other uh, religious countries like uh, Islamic countries because they consider you because the 99% of the population for instance uh, anywhere in one of those uh, Islamic countries uh, are Muslim or practicing Islam or, or at least they claim they're Muslim uh, then they consider that person born there as Muslim which is totally wrong because it's not hereditary faith is not hereditary you can inherit it and Judaism is no different Judaism you cannot inherit Judaism it's not hereditary faith faith no no faith is hereditary and it's not a nationality either but they consider it that way the government of Israel can consider it that way when when you're born in a family uh, of Israeli they consider you as a Jew uh, so that is totally wrong and it shouldn't be and it shouldn't be taught that way either it shouldn't be given that kind of impression to people that they are a set of people a nation a, you know it's just a religion it's just people who practice this faith they could be in different locations of the world so no uh, I, I would be careful about what you're saying. Yes, it is an enigma because you're saying can somebody love and hate at the same time? Uh, no, it is an enigma. You can't do that. And uh, when you talk about love, uh, love doesn't mean you have to like everybody. I don't have to like all Jews to be a Christian. Uh, Jesus didn't do that. If, if that was the case, then Jesus would, would be on the question himself. John the Baptist would be on the question himself. And so many other uh, prophets, because they went against uh, Jews. And they went against their practices. So the question is wrong. And uh, as far as love is concerned, uh, love is a vast subject. We can talk about it for days and weeks. And I have messages on love according to the Bible on my again website jesusministries.co.uk you can go there and see them but however this kind of love that we're talking about is that you have so much love you have to be like God God so loved the world that he gave his only son uh, and what did Jesus do Jesus gave his own life for you for me for for everybody so we can have access to the Lord, to our Father, that we can call Abba by the Spirit. And uh, now what we have to do, if we want to be like Christ and Christian, basically, Spirit-filled, like you say, then we have to have that kind of love. What is that love? That love is that you have to love somebody so much to give them the Gospel. Now, you don't have to like them you can dislike them, you can even hate them, hate their personality, hate their characters, hate what they do. But you should love them so much to give them the gospel. This kind of love is not that I, because I'm Christian, and although you're a murderer, I still love you, you know, you're lovely. I stroke your head and give you flowers and, you know, give you gifts. No, that, that's not the kind of love the Bible is talking about. The Bible is saying you have to love uh, as Christ loved the church. So we love by giving people 
even people we don't like the gospel so they get saved so they become like us so they become lovable and likable uh, anyway uh, even in the body of Christ you don't have to like everybody there are Christians there are spirit-filled Christians who don't like another spirit-filled Christian that doesn't mean you're not spirit-filled the Bible teaches us that uh, everybody in the body of Christ has their own responsibilities and their gifts and their uh, duties so the eye can't say to the hand I am better than you uh, or uh, the ear can say to the mouth you know uh, I wish I was you it, everybody has their own place and their own responsibilities and their talents and their gifts God given gifts and they have to use them accordingly now my message also to the people who are sending me these kind of messages is please don't do that because uh, this is this is all uh, wrong we're not here to cause disarray and we're not here to uh, I, I get my because I, I get my messages from the Lord and uh, somebody else gets their messages from the Lord and the, the Lord is the same Lord now he or she wants to give their messages however they want and however they can with their own talents and skills and their uh, you know whatever background they have and I, I, I do it my way so don't uh, try to make us you know feel like we have to be like each other we, we're all different we're all different and we all have different gifts uh, Jesus didn't follow John the Baptist to see what he is saying listen to him John the Baptist didn't follow Jesus to see what he is saying he wasn't his disciple he had his own crowd of people and Jesus had his own crowd of people and they both uh, followed the Lord they both were filled with the Holy Spirit they both did what God had commanded them the Father had commanded them and uh, you can't condemn one or the other uh, because they weren't together or they weren't doing the same things even the disciples were questioning that they were saying you know John the Baptist's disciples are fasting well, you know why don't we do this they pray this way why don't we pray that way those kind of things it's all wrong and Jesus says you know you shouldn't do that we're all different and we all have different gifts and uh, talents and whatever we can uh, we should do uh, and I've said that in my other messages that uh, we have to do what we can uh, but distorting the Word of God is not one of them it's far from it we should not distort or uh, make a message that misleads people to, to say the least because we have been given this uh, anointing we have been delegated to uh, lead people to teach people and if we mislead them we, we have more of a guilt on our heads than anything else so please don't do this I am one for unity and I've called for that and please um, don't expect everybody to be the same and don't judge everybody the same and don't mm, try to generalize a group of people any group of people they're not the same even if you think about it in your own family you're not the same as your father your mother your sister your brothers they're all you're even your own siblings you're not the same if you have siblings if you look at yourself and your siblings you're not the same you might even look the same but your your character your personalities your gifts your uh, in many areas you're different we are all uniquely made individual and and for parents expecting their children to be exactly the same in every area is totally wrong and God wouldn't expect us all do the same thing and be the same then then what's the point and it can't be all eyes and we can't be all ears and we can't be all mouths we can't be all hands everybody has their own places and if if they haven't found 
their places, then they need to, then they need to find their own right places and operate and function in that place in the body of Christ. Not outside the body of Christ, but in the body of Christ. So anyway, I want to close this case here. If you need to read about that, please go to the link below in the description of this video and read on that um, to see if Jesus himself considered uh, himself uh, as a Jew or not and what Judaism is about because people have this wrong conception of Judaism and unfortunately like I said people who have had the responsibilities have had the positions to teach and open eyes uh, and educate people that uh, Judaism is not a nationality, is not a race. Uh, they, they don't do it. And, and to be honest, I haven't heard that often taught, to say the least. So please uh, take my message to your heart and think about it. Uh, read about it, study it, and then you can make your judgments and decisions, whatever you want to do with that. God bless you and I'll see you again with another message.